This is Lynn Lithgow. And as New Year breaks in 2022, there's a Rami brewing in this town. So who is the black bitch of Lynn Lithgow? And why is everybody talking about her? If you're interested in the people, places and events in Scottish history, then click the subscribe button at the bottom right of the screen. In the meantime, let me tell you a story. Today's video is going to be unusual for me. You see, normally I talk about history and try and humanise it with a modern day context. But today, I want to take current events and place them in an historical context. And you might just be able to see two little islands in Linlithgow Loth here in the background. They're part of it. You see, they weren't always islands. Many, 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 many years ago, they were crannogs. Now, crannogs were large wooden roundhouses built on wooden platforms out in the water of a loch. Until recently, you could visit an archaeological reconstruction on Loch Tay, but sadly, it burned down in 2021. The thing is that all crannogs come an end of their useful life at some point, and when they're abandoned, the second law of thermodynamics, well, it, it does what it does. Decay means that they collapse in on themselves and form a mound of trunks, logs and branches in the loch. Gradually, it silts up, seeds take root and eventually you get a little island, just like the two in the loch behind me. So, these little islands haven't always been there, but they have been there since before today's story. Another thing that's been there forever is crime. And back in the depths of time, there was a bloke in Linlithgow who was convicted of theft. I, I don't know his name. Let's call him Nick. Now, back in those days, punishments were harsh. And Nick was sentenced to death by starvation. He was put out on one of the islands and left to die a long, slow and grim death. As the days and weeks went by, it became apparent that Nick was no less sprightly than he had been when they'd put him out there in the first place. So the authorities watched the island, and one night, they saw the reason for Nick's continued well-being. You see, Nick had a dog. It was a clever, loyal, loving and resourceful dog, and every night, under the cover of darkness, the dog would swim out to his master and take him food, thus sustaining him through his ordeal. Of course, straight away, the dog was arrested. It was questioned, but it didn't talk. I mean, it was a clever and resourceful dog, but let's not take the piss. Now, the dog was tried and convicted for aiding a criminal, and the dog was sentenced to death by starvation on the other Cranag Island. Right now, in Hartlepool, there are folks laughing at the stupidity of people in Linlithgow. They are saying, <laughs> we would have hung the dog. Now, if you don't know the story of the Hartlepool monkey hangers, then get somebody to start an England History Tours channel. They'll tell you. Now, if you're anything like my wife and daughter, you've listened to that story and you're thinking, oh, the poor dog. If you're like my mate Gary, you're saying, what type of dog was it? Look Gary, this was centuries ago, I had to make up the name of the guy. How would I know what type of dog it was? Well, there's a reason that I know what type of dog it was. Because, from as early as 1296, when brave, loyal William Wallace was fighting people trying to impose themselves from the south, the people of Linlithgow chose this clever, loving and resourceful dog as the symbol of their town. This Greyfriars Bobby of West Lothian is on the Linlithgow coat of arms. It's on the badge of the local school. There's even a statue here in the street. It was black, it was female and it was a whippet. It's the reason that people born in Linlithgow can proudly call themselves Black Bitches. Mary Queen of Scots is a black bitch. Former First Minister of Scotland Alex Salmond is a black bitch. Scotty from Star Trek is a black bitch. Now, if you're thinking, hold on, Scotty from Star Trek isn't real. Let me remind you that you were quite happy with a medieval whip at making packed lunches and crossing a lock in a pair of speedos. Whether or not the black bitch in the Lithgow coat of arms is an animal from legend rather than history, it's part of the heritage, culture and character of the town. 
There's even a pub in the town called the Black Bitch in memory of the courageous, loyal dog. And whilst we're here, if you want to buy me a dram, a pint or a coffee to help support the channel, you can click the link in the description and make a donation at Buy Me A Coffee to help with the cost of making these videos. Now, I said that the pub's called the Black Bitch. It's recently been bought by a company from Suffolk called Green King and they say it can no longer be called the Black Bitch because that is racist. That's right, the company CEO who in a wonderful stroke of irony is called Nick has said that people don't feel welcome visiting a pub with that name. But Nick, you know the name refers to a dog? The picture on the wall outside is a duck. It's no Diane Abbott. If it was, I'd be the first person down here banging a drum. There's a woman born of a West Indian working family in London, dad a welder, mum a nurse, who must have fought all sorts of opposition and hurdles to get into and graduate from Cambridge, become one of the first group of black MPs in the House of Commons, and in spite of those achievements, to this day, receives continual abuse and racist tropes of stupidity. The world's full of racism that makes no mention of colour. But you know what's implied. Fighting those racist slurs is something I'd support you on now. But the name of this pub isn't racist and it's got nothing to do with race. But it turns out it's worse than I thought. The Suffolk Company say that they've been discussing this for months. It turns out that they know the history behind the pub's name. They know that the name of the pub's not a racial slur, but they're still going to change the name of the black bitch to the Black Hound. What? It's still black? And how is Hound helping? How many times have you heard teenage boys or blokish men refer to a woman as a Hound? I know I have. But apparently, this name change is the only thing that'll hold back the goose-stepping hordes of Linlithgow marching down the high street in a wave of Aryan glory. It does the very opposite. It gives Raj right-wing racist Little Englanders an excuse to complain about political correctness gone mad. Because, and I'm going to say something I have never said in my life before, this is political correctness gone mad. It manufactures a racist intent that was never there in the first place. It's a dug. It's a female dug. And it brings black and white together. It's a greyhound. Now, there are whippet enthusiasts and greyhound fanciers raging in the comment section that a greyhound's not a whippet. But it was worth it for the joke. The point is that they tell me that the people of Linlithgow, or the black bitches as they're known, are proud of that name. Mary Queen of Scots, Alex Salmon, Scotty from Star Trek, a woman, a man and an imaginary character with the shittest Scottish accent in the world are all proud black bitches and none of them are black. And what makes the original black bitch black? The colour of its hair. Maybe instead of changing the name of the pub, we should just shave the dug. Or maybe we change the name of the pub to the hairy bitch. Oh, but you can't do that, because that might offend women in Kirkcaldy. And yes, it's a joke. I have no idea if women in Kirkcaldy are statistically any hairier than women in Bowness. Bowness is the next town which kind of panders to local rivalry. Kirkcaldy just sounded better. And there's a chance that people outside Scotland might have heard of Kirkcaldy, the home of Adam Smith, author of The Wealth of Nations, the 18th century philosophical treatise that revolutionised our understanding of economics, based on a detailed analysis of trade, of leg wax and products in Fife. Now, in various videos, I've talked about women's equality and racial fairness. There are women and people of colour in the UK today who suffer the effects of irrational racism. I've given an example. 
It seems to me that it's a hangover from the whole transatlantic slave thing. And for the microcosm of Raj, white folk who get upset at the very mention of transatlantic slavery, as a descendant of British people on the one hand and West African people on the other hand, who knows but that my ancestors were baddies on two continents. It's not our fault. We just need to behave right today. So what about the owners, the new owners of the Black Bitch, Green Taverns? They were established in Suffolk in 1799 by businessman Benjamin Green. 20 years later, he acquired control of plantations in the West Indies. 10 years after that, he also acquired the Bury and Suffolk Herald newspaper and used it to campaign against both the Reform Bill and the Slavery Abolition Bill. It seems that Green liked slavery, but hated democracy. Having campaigned against the abolition of slavery, when it was finally abolished, he made a claim of £4,033.15 shillings and seven pence as compensation for the loss of services of his 231 slaves. Now, around 18 months ago, Green King decided that it should make contributions to ethnic minority charities, possibly in lieu of past indiscretions of their founder. And that's all very well. It may even be well-intentioned rather than just corporate PR. But if they're genuinely committed to a campaign of changing names whose racist overtones cause upset, maybe they need to look a little closer to home. Because keeping the corporate name and identity of a slave driver an anti-abolitionist, whilst coming up here and wiping out cultural identity and history of a town, isn't quite the way to go about it. Benjamin Green, elitist slaver and campaigner against democracy, I don't think people would feel comfortable visiting a pub associated with that name. How no change the name of the company and leave the wee Lithgay dug alone? The one good thing that's come out of this is that we've all learned how Linlithgow got his coat of arms. Now, there's a really interesting video about a less controversial part of Linlithgow history coming up on screen now. In the meantime, I mean, Dawkins can be a lama, like. Cheery and drastic.